2 Kings 23, verse 21. And the king commanded Josiah, this is one of the best kings, all the people saying, Keep the Passover unto the Lord your God, as is written in the book of this covenant. So he's got the law of Moses. And I guarantee you he's not just reading this Leviticus. He's, he's read the whole thing. Or he's got very great principal parts of that law. Now, the Passover. Call upon the Passover. He's read about in the law. Let's go back to Joshua 5.10. Joshua 5.10, when they're in the land. Because we're going to read that this Passover is more than what the judges. And as a nation, Joshua 5, verse 10. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal, and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month, at even in the plains of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow, after the Passover, unleavened cakes and, corn, and parched corn and Saint self day. And the man has ceased. So when Joshua is coming to the land, it is that time of the Passover. There's no more manna. They are now feasting off the land. Second Chronicles chapter 8, verse 12. Second Chronicles 8, 12. This is Solomon. Because you're, you're, you don't find the Passover mentioned much. In 2 Chronicles 8, 12, this is right after David. Then Solomon offered burnt offerings unto the Lord on the altar of the Lord, which he had built before the porch, even after a certain rate every day, offering according to the commandment of Moses, the law, on the Sabbath, on the new moons, on the solemn feasts, Three times in the year, even in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that's right after the Passover, and in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles. So Solomon kept the Passover. And Second Chronicles 30, verse 1. Remember, there were some bad kings in Judah. There were times that they weren't doing what God was supposed what they were supposed to do with God. Second Chronicles 30, verse 1. That page just stop sticking. And the Passover will be in sec what we're going to read today will be in 2 Chronicles 35, but 2 Chronicles 30, verse 1, and Hezekiah. That's Josiah's great grandfather. You got Hezekiah, you got Manasseh, you got Amon, then you got Josiah. So there's been four reigning kings sent unto all Israel and Judah and wrote letters to Ephraim. And what he's going to do is declare verse 15 of chapter 30. Verse 15. Then they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the second month. We had a little problem there. Passover was to be on the first month, Abed. But if you remember, when we go to study Second Chronicles, when we get here, Lord willing, the land is defiled. He's cleaning. He's destroying. He's burning. He, he's getting rid of the sin. He's getting rid of religion. And they come to the time it's, it's too late to have the Passover. And in this chapter, he sends out a decree of right. He said, come on, everybody, let's keep the Passover. But we got to pray to God. Why do we got to pray to God? Because we can't do it in the first month. The priests are not clean. The priests have not been uh, made into the priesthood. There's a lot of work, and God would allow. But Hezekiah's Passover is not really counted because it's not on the day the Passover was to be. So picking up in verse 21 of chapter 23 in 2 Kings, And the king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover unto the Lord your God, as is written in the book of the covenant. Abed, the month of Abed. His great-grandfather had in the second month. Surely, watch this, surely, that's an important Bible word. That's how surely died, Adam. Surely there was not holding, that's the first time that word shows up. 
such a Passover from the days of the judges that judge Israel. Samuel had a Passover, and he was a judge of Israel. But look how far through Kings and Chronicles and Samuel, the lacking of Passover feasts. And that was a national identity of Israel. That's when Israel became that nation that came out of Egypt under the blood of the Lamb that John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That Passover Lamb was to be, here we are as a nation, the Lamb of God is to be here, we're to be redeemed. Nor in all the days of the kings of Israel. Solomon, he would turn to a thousand wives and as many as gods he could. As we read Hezekiah, he had to do it in the wrong month. Nor of the kings of Judah. And all the kings of Israel were wicked and violent. They didn't have anything to do with God. So the Passover wouldn't have been there. But in the 18th year of Josiah, that's interesting, 18. Wherein this Passover was holding to the Lord in Jerusalem. Proper place, proper time. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits, you know, that's contacting the spirit world like uh, uh, King Saul did, and the wizards, and the images, and the idols, and all the abominations. So look. Familiar spirits, wizards, images, and idols are abominations. Can we get any more clear? That were spied in the land of Judah. The spied, look at that word. Spied in the land of Judah. And in Jerusalem did Josiah put away that he might perform the words of the law, which were written in the book of, that Hezekiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. So he put all everybody out. He's clean Israel. Now he's cleaning the people out. Hey, we're going to have to pass over. You got to get out of here. Move it. Get out of my land. Get out of God's house. And like unto him was there no king before him. He did even better than Hezekiah. That turned to the Lord with all their all his heart. And Romans 10 says, with the heart, man, it's about the heart. We, as a family today, we, we read in Exodus, fair, well, pardon my sin just, just once of your God. That ain't no, that is no repentance. And that is taken today by the church. There is repentance with no heart. Oh, this person say, did it come from the heart? God knows the heart. God knows the salvation. But if it's not of the heart, it's not salvation. King Josiah, here in the Old Testament, here under the law, here where there is no Calvary, the God, the Holy Spirit records he had the proper heart condition. And even under the law, it had to be heart. That's why David was forgiven of murder and adultery. It was of his heart. That's why Saul, King Saul, was not forgiven and is in hell today because it wasn't the proper heart attitude. It's all heart. You can say whoever you want to be saved. If it's not from the heart, it's there's, it's not there. It's like you got a husband and wife together. There's no heart in that in that relationship. It's not a marriage. And with all his soul, and with all his might. Now with that, with his heart, his soul, his might. Let's go to Deuteronomy six five to see that he's. Reading all the law. There's been one book been found, but we've been looking through him all different parts of the law. We saw Exodus. We've seen Deuteronomy. We've seen Leviticus in his life showing up. Now, there were different scrolls. You didn't have one big scroll with everything on it. So Deuteronomy 6.5. This is what you call, uh, forgive me if I, if I say it wrong, but the Shema. That's a Jewish word. And you can know this Jewish word. And this is prayed twice a day by the Jewish people today. Thou shalt love the Lord, Jehovah, thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. 
That's a prayer. That's a commandment under the Lord and the Holy Spirit. What we just read, what is called the Shema or Shema. We're going back over here to Josiah, chapter 23, verse 25. With all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his might. This guy, you will definitely see Josiah in heaven. With all his might, according to all the law of Moses, we just read that, Deuteronomy 6, 5. Law of Moses is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. There is law in Genesis. Once Noah came out of that boat or that ark, he said, any man that kills any man, that life shall be shed. Now, there was no law for, for Abel and Cain when Cain killed Abel. But Noah brought forth a law. In verse 26, notwithstanding, uh -oh, we are notwithstanding, all have sinned come short of the glory of God. So was Josiah. The Lord turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath. So God's still angry, but not at Josiah. He's angry with Judah. Wherewith his anger was kindled against Judah. So all the rightness that Josiah is doing, his heart is right. His soul is right. His might is right. The people are not. Because of all the provocations, that's the first time that word shows up, that Manasseh had provoked him to withal. So there's still the sins of Manasseh still showing up. That Manasseh repented and got right and got rid of everything, not completely. But what about the blood that Manasseh shed? He died, but he wasn't executed according to what the law for being a murderer. His son Amon picked up his idol worship and picked up his God's worship, small G-O-D-S worship and Amon went on with the gods of Manasseh. Manasseh is long dead. And we have taught and it's properly to teach that hey, Paul is still getting results from people getting saved out of the book of Romans. Peter through the through the, the epistles of Peter are still getting saved. John is still seeing people saved out of the book of Revelation. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Job, uh, John. People are still getting saved out of those gospels. There is glorification to these people who wrote and to all the people who have been witnessing to witness to witness to witness of people getting saved. Somewhere along the line, I, I can name Joe Caswell that witnessed to me. Somebody witnessed to him. Somebody witnessed to that person. And you go all the way back to Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. All right? That's the good half. That's the positive half. But there's also things we've done wrong. There are sins that we have done that will fail and go into the future to our children and the people that we have not yet meet and we're never going to meet because of death. Our nation as, as a country has done sins against God, against the Bible, and look, look at the downfall of this country where it's going today. We, as parents, have done sins in our early life that affected our children even before our children were born. And while they were born, and while they were living, our attitude and our ways that have been brought to our children to sin because we sinned and we taught them to sin. And our failure against God for all have sin come short of the glory of God. There are sins that we pass on to our children, though we don't want it, though if we we tried not to, we still do. And then there's just open sins we teach our children. And here Manasseh is being charged as we will be charged with our sins. Look how many times, look how many years we read the sins of Jeroboam made Israel to sin and he was long dead. And your attitude toward God, whether it be good, positive, or it be terrible, negative, is going to be passing on to your children. So Manasseh, here he is. He's dead, but his sins are still showing up. Manasseh had provoked him with all. 
And the Lord said, I will remove Judah, and that's coming up pretty soon, also out of my sight, as I have removed Israel, already gone. Israel has taken off, been put in captivity during Hezekiah. And will cast off this city, Jerusalem, which I have chosen, and the house of which I said, my name shall be there. Sins, wickedness, wizardry, idolatry, groves and gods and different altars and high places. God says, I had enough. Germany is out because of what they've done for the Jews. China is out because all their, their emperor worship of family. China's big, big worship was all these gods and the family gods. India is gone because they worship anything as a god but God. They got little flies. They got everything as a god to, to the Indian, uh, the true Indians over in Asia. Russia is on the way out because what she done to the Jews. God said, I will curse them that curse you. England is, is getting cursed out. They're getting balled out. They're getting in trouble because they've taken the Bible, the King James 1611 Bible, and they have perverted it. And gone against it, and gone against God, and gone for parade of sins of the people. And America is following very quick behind. Mexico as a nation, I don't know if it was ever good, but Mexico as a nation is one of them nations that's given himself to the great whore, to the Catholic Church. And the Lord said, I will remove Judah. Also out of my sight as I remove Israel. If God removed Judah as he will, if he's removed Israel as he has because of their sins, America, England, and these nations that have sinned against God will go too. If America would have that place, New Jerusalem, New Heavens, New Earth, and America, God bless her, he would have to apologize to everybody in Israel. He will have to apologize to all the sinners of Judah. And he won't. I will move Judah out of my sight, and I will move Israel. Now, Israel and Judah has that permanent covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's going to move them out of their sight temporarily. He's going to deal with them as a child that is wrong, as correction to that child, but he still loves that nation. That nation is still above all nations. That promise is not to England. That promise is not to America, Mexico, Russia, China, anywhere including the Arabians, which are Ishmael. That promise is only to Israel. Israel split two nations, but there's still one in the eyes of God. As I remove Israel and will cast off the city Jerusalem, that's God's city, which I have chosen, and the house which I said, this is the temple, the house of God, my name shall be there. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and all that he did, are they not written in the books of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? We'll get there, Lord willing. Second Chronicles 35. In his days, Pharaoh Nikon, Nikol, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyria to the river Euphrates. Now look at it. King of Egypt way down here. King of Syria is kind of there, and they're over where Iraq is. Egypt had to cross Israel to get to the river Euphrates to battle the Syrians. That's where it would be Nineveh and all them. God sent the Egyptians after the Syrians for going after the Jews. I will curse them that curse you. Even though I'm going to use you to punish my people, you leave my people alone because cursed be the, them that curse you. Babylon will be cursed because they curse the Jews, the Greeks and the Medes. So here comes Egypt. And, jo and King Josiah went against him. He wasn't supposed to be there. And he slew him at Megiddo. That's the battle of Armageddon. Look how that shows up. Now, a type of Christ, he's not here because Christ is not going to be killed at the bar battle of Armageddon. But Josiah is. He ventured somewhere where he wasn't supposed to go. When he had seen him. And his servants carried him in a chariot, dead, from Megiddo, and brought him to Jerusalem and buried him in his own scepter. So he gets his own scepter. 
And the people of the land took Jehoaz, Jehoaz, the son of Josiah, and anointed him and made him king in his father's stead. Okay, here's the son. He gets the throne. And Jehoaz was 20 and three years old when he began to reign. He reigned three months. <laughs> That's not a good reign. In Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hamatal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. Now, it's not the same Jeremiah of the book of Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah. He was a Vashtoreth. That's, let's see, where? He was of Ananoth, Ananoth. It was not the same Jeremiah. And he, this is Jehoaz, did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Well, he was one of them bad kings. According to all that his fathers had done. Now that wouldn't that is not Josiah. And you say, why do you keep because people have a problem with that word father in the Bible? There are people who call themselves father in the name of religion. And people don't understand that word father also means grandfathers. And by what we've studied in chapter 23 alone tells you that father, that's not Josiah, his father. That guy did right every aspect. So it would have to be the lineage of his fathers. And Pharaoh Nikon, this is the one that killed his father, put him in bands in Ribla, in the land of Hamath, that he might not reign in Jerusalem. So that three-month reign of Jehoaz was ended by the king, by Pharaoh, and put him, or excuse me, and put the land to tribute, taxes, of a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. Here's one part with the kings taken away in Judah. It's a little mercy and grace here. When God took the king out of Israel by Assyria, it, boom, you're just gone. Now we're getting a little lapse here. Get right, come on, repent, get right. And Pharaoh Nikon made Elkayim, the son of Josiah, so here's another son of Josiah, not a son of Jehoaz, but a son of Je uh, uh, Josiah, king in the room of Josiah, his father. There's not even a, a recognizing. There's not even acknowledging of Jehoaz being a king. It's like, oh yeah, he was there. We got rid of him. And turned his name to Jehoiakim. So Elkan has a name changed by Pharaoh to Jehoiakim and took Jehoaz away, that would be his brother, and he came to Egypt and died there. And Jehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, the taxes, the tribute. Tribute taxes is like, we'll let you live but it's going to cost you. We'll let you stay in the land, but you pay up for it. But he taxed the land to give the money according to the commandment of Pharaoh. So he had to tax the people to pay for it. He extracted, that's the demand by authority, extract. The silver and gold of the people of the land. Jewish people are being taxed to pay for Pharaoh. Of everyone according to his taxation to give it unto Pharaoh Nikon. Jehoiakim was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Zebad, the daughter of Pedaiah of Rebna. Rumna. And these names can get close. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord according to all that his fathers had done, and we'll pick up another chapter. Good kings, bad kings in Judah. But we're moving our way as we come to the close of 2 Kings. And we'll pick it up in chapter 24 when Babylon's going to start coming. And they'll be carried away captive.